the guys who were popular at school, how many of them were just the loud ones? If you actually look back and think about it, were these guys really so much cleverer or brilliant or funnier or socially better than anyone else? Or were they just the one, they weren't scared of the teachers, they were happy to be loud, sometimes they were the class clown, they were just the ones for whatever reason, whether it was an inherent sense of confidence or maybe they were good at sport or whatever. Hello guys, how are we? For those of you new here, I'm a psychology student trained to be a therapist. So on this channel, we talk about positivity, mindset, mental health, well-being, and all things like that. So if that sounds of interest, stick around. Stop apologizing for existing. Now, this in itself may sound a little bit silly, a little bit ridiculous, but when I talk you through what I mean by it, I think you'll realize that it's actually a lot more common than you maybe initially realize. Something ridiculous like 70 to 75% of our communication is non-verbal and that often explains quite a lot why two people can say the exact same thing, um, even in the exact same context potentially, but get completely different responses from the people they're talking to. All that leading to say that I don't literally mean people apologise for existing, but they do it in the way they communicate non-verbally. So I wanna go into that a little bit. This was inspired by something I just saw on the weekend, uh, just had going away to France. You guys know I've been out there sort of watching the World Cup and I was in this bar in Lille and it was, it was pretty packed um, and I was at the bar with a friend of mine and we were both looking at this guy and without even sort of communicating, he just tapped me on the shoulder and said exactly what I was thinking. He said, that bloke ain't getting any served anytime soon. And that, may sound like a weird way to start a story but let me let me go on what was happening was this guy was sort of standing he was getting a little bit close to the front of the bar and it wasn't even that he was letting people in front of him he just had the his whole demeanor was like basically he was like i say he was just apologizing for being there without even saying the words P people were sort of like like I said, it wasn't even that he was letting in front. People would sort of like jump in front and he just sort of wouldn't do anything. And he just, his whole body and his posture was sort of like this. And it's hard to explain, obviously, without sort of being able to show a video or a picture of it. But I thought it was a very relatable example because I can imagine either you guys have seen someone like that or maybe you've even been in that situation yourself where you're sort of in a situation where you don't even consciously feel like you're maybe either letting people in front of you or letting people talk over you. You just, you can't really explain what's happening, but you just feel like you have no authority, no power, no presence in a given situation. Now, it's easy to say that people like that are just a bit quiet or a bit shy or a bit timid or whatever, but I actually think it's more than that. I think it relates more on a weirder level to self-respect. Again, it almost sounds a bit silly, but it's, it's like people feel that they don't deserve attention or even space. And that's what sort of leads me to say that the way they carry themselves, their demeanor, their body language, their non-verbal communication is effectively apologizing for existing. Now, I can certainly talk about this from, from personal experience. It's, it's hard to believe sort of the, the way I am now, but in certain situations, I was actually very, very timid as a child. I was never shy. I would talk to anyone or walk into any room. That never bothered me. But in situations, especially with crowds, I sometimes really, really struggled to, to make myself get heard. And that sort of, when I was a young child, that wasn't a problem. And then sort of early teenage years, when I first went to secondary school, it became a real problem. And that's why I think you can link it back to self-respect because at primary school, I was sort of life wasn't too bad it wasn't until i went to secondary school that sort of i got bullied quite badly and everything like that and sort of standard thing especially for a guy everyone sort of hit their growth spurt and i didn't and i that's why i say i think i can link it to self-respect because it was like i i felt like i didn't really belong anywhere i didn't feel like i deserved to be heard i didn't feel like i had good at ideas to contribute Physically, I felt smaller than everyone, so I, I sort of felt like, oh, I shouldn't really, I shouldn't really be there. And although that's sort of a, a very childish example in terms of how old we were, I definitely think it can be linked forward. And it's sort of almost a paradox now, in the sense of anyone who's, who's met me knows, but I've sort of said it on the channel before, I'm quite 
I'm certainly short for a bloke, but I'm also quite small in terms of in terms of frame. I'm sort of about five five, five six or whatever. And because of that, I haven't really got much of a choice but to be a little bit more assertive, a little bit louder, because otherwise in especially in crowded bars full of big men, I will literally just not get seen if I don't sort of push myself forward and get to the front of a line. Got off on a slight tangent there, but to bring it back again to a more sort of tangible example, especially sort of guys in their late teens, early 20s or, or, or older that can, that can relate to, how many guys have you worked with in the past to have got sort of promotions or guys you know that have actually even got a lot of romantic attention just because they are quite loud they're quite assertive maybe even to the point of being obnoxious they are just it's not even that they're confident necessarily because it can all be a bit of bravado but they're never shy they're never timid they never look like they're uh, like I say apologizing for existing again on the flip side I bet you've met some absolutely brilliant people some lovely people who didn't get promoted at work or don't really get attention either socially or romantically or whatever because they, they're so reserved and they're so quiet. And again, it's more than being shy. It's the fact that they almost give off an aura of, like I say, they're just apologizing for existing. They're just sort of, like, they act like they don't belong in any room, in any situation. They don't feel like they have anything to contribute or anything to offer. And that does some ha sometimes happen. And again, going back even further, sort of going back to the school example, sort of the flip side of, 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 of my side of things is the, the guys who were popular at school, how many of them were just the loud ones? If you actually look back and think about it, were these guys really so much cleverer or brilliant or funnier or socially better than anyone else? Or were they just the one, they weren't scared of the teachers, they were happy to be loud, sometimes they were the class clown. They were just the ones, for whatever reason, whether it was an inherent sense of confidence or maybe they were good at sport or whatever, they, their whole body language, their whole demeanor was just cool, like whatever, yeah, I'm, I'm funny, I'm popular, I'm, and, and, it, and it sort of, people would, were very drawn to that, especially at a young age, because there aren't many kids who can pull that off. I think especially at that age, and I know this was certainly certainly my thing when I was when I was at secondary school and sort of struggling with this, but even sort of going into old years, I actually think we talked about self-respect, but I think a lot of it is fear of confrontation. And especially sort of I'm not obviously I can't speak from a girl's point of view, but when when you're a boy, especially in secondary school, there is it feels like if nothing else, if you if you upset the wrong person, you might be in for a beating, which at that age you're you're not really keen for. To counteract this, I want to make it very clear, I'm not suggesting that you just be loud for the sake of being loud, I think that makes you look like a bit of a knob most of the time, I'm certainly not saying being obnoxious, I'm certainly not saying seek out confrontation, people like that, especially as your adults, because it is such childish behaviour, just look like absolute idiots, I would never want you guys to be obnoxious, confrontational or anything like that. My two cures for this, if, 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 you, if you want to call it that, one um, would be kill that fear of confrontation, which is a lot harder, it's a lot easier said than done, I should say, but it is so important. And the one of the things that's sort of beauty of being older, unless you get yourself into a situation with the right bunch of wrong ones, rarely anything bad actually happens, would be the first thing I said. Like, when you're in secondary school, especially if it is like a, a, an all boys school, which I went to, yeah, fights do happen quite a lot, and that, that as adults, how many adults do you know, unless you hang out with idiots who go down and look for it on a, on a Saturday night? Like, if, you, if you're if you just like in, in a line at Starbucks or something like that and someone pushes in front of you and you go, excuse me, there is actually a queue back here, are they actually gonna turn around and lamp you in the face? Probably not. They might mouth off a little bit, but they'll walk off to the back of the queue. So that's the first thing I'd say. Really, really try and kill any fear of confrontation you have. And the second thing, which in ways is actually harder, but in ways is easier, which is a bit paradoxical, but it's to build up yourself and develop yourself to the point where you feel socially confident that you can contribute. That was what I said earlier about the second part of it, was I feel like a reason a lot of people are sort of very timid and quiet and they don't speak up even when they feel they've got good ideas or whatever, is because for whatever reason, whether that be their fault or not their fault, learned behavior, whatever, they feel like they have nothing to contribute socially to the situation. Like, again, we talked about earlier, how many guys have you met at work where they, you know they could have done a project better than someone else, but they didn't put themselves forward? Or in school, there was a sort of the quiet kid, the, he, got, he got A's on all the papers, so he knew what to say, but he never put his hand up in class. And yeah, some people say that's just shy, but I don't think it is that. I think it is 
far more about building yourself up to a point where you're not scared to be wrong. As in, one, obviously, ideally, you know so much about something that you feel confident answering because you feel confident you're going to be right. But also, you're not scared to say the wrong thing and deal with the backlash. Again, that's sort of linked to that fear of confrontation. But a huge part of sort of growing socially is getting it wrong. That's just a reality. And I'm nearly 30 and I still say things and make jokes that were very badly timed and you, you learn that that no one no one's perfect as long as you never go out of malicious intent which i'm guessing you don't if you're watching this channel you're probably not that kind of person just as i'm not we don't go out to really hurt people but sometimes you just say things that are wrong but you've got to be confident enough in yourself to not go oh that's it i'm just never going to say anything in my friendship so i'm never going to have friends or whatever you've got to go out there and be okay with that potential for rejection. It may feel like external forces. If this is something that's happening to you or has happened to you in the past, it may feel like external forces, but I promise you it's not. It is an internal thing which you can fix. No one watches you as closely as they, you think they do. No one watches you as closely as you watch yourself. And the reality is, if you don't respect yourself, no one else is going to respect you. You have to fix it internally. Thank you for making it all the way to the end. I do appreciate you guys who stick around. If you did find any of it useful, please do consider liking and subscribing. I drop two new videos every week. Comment on the other thoughts you have below. My socials are in the description and I will see you in the next one. Until then, take care guys.